Smile, darling. Give us a smile. <laughs> So, we fled Uzbekistan. We're safely in Shimken, back in Kazakhstan. Now, why did we flee? We have made a video explaining it. It's, um, yeah, if you ever think about coming in these areas, you probably want to watch this video. Uh, but I'm going to hold off releasing it for a while, because I want to make sure that we are in uh, a free, society where human beings have rights before I release it you know. um, so yeah we've got a video with a pipeline but we're just gonna have to hang on to it for a while but believe me it's a story so this story is last time we came from Shimkent uh, I'm sorry from Almaty in Kazakhstan to Shimkent by train and we did a video on that so you know what it's like on the way back we're going from Shimkent back to Almaty now and in order to um, make it a little bit different this time I'm going to do something that I've never done before uh, I mean I've been on buses before but this time we are going to travel on a bus that folds out to beds and um, yeah it's going to be an experience I've never been on one before I, I remember back in the day going from Queensland to, to Sydney on a bus but there was no beds or anything involved you just sat there all scrunched up and by the time you got there it took you 28 actually I think from memory it took about 18 hours and when you got there it took you three weeks to um, to recover and that was at the age of 19 or 20 years of age so I can imagine trying to do it in my busted up old body now but anyway, that's the bus that we're going on. There's a little bit of a story. You, you can't really do anything online in this, this part of the world. You, you can't just get online, see schedules, go, yep, that's the ticket I want, that's the route I want, click. Even if you do speak the local language, you just can't do it. So Elena's achievement was uh, yesterday, was to, um, no, actually, <laughs> time flies, it was just this morning, she got up early and caught a cab down here to the bus station and she went into the terminal and in the terminal she asked about whether there was bus tickets and to El Matty and uh, she didn't find out about the cost, I don't know what the cost were. Anyway, the lady suggested, yes, would you like to go and have a look at the actual bus? And I thought, oh, that's a good idea. So she came out and she talked to the bus driver of that bus there and he said, oh, oh so it's a, you're a married couple, oh, we can give you a double bed. And she said, oh, that sounds all right, that's good, instead of, you know, scrunching up in single beds. And uh, she said, oh, well, okay, I'll go in and I'll ask for a double bed. And he said, oh, no, no, if you, if you want a double bed, if you want a double bed, you, you pay me. Just pay me directly. And then uh, I'll sort that out. And I went, oh, okay. Paid the driver. And then she said, oh, do I get tickets? And of course, naturally, she thought, well, what if I never see this guy again? There you go, I'm paying for it affair and it's not good we're not going to be able to get anywhere never see him again i can't track him down so he, anyway he takes um gives her a card and takes a photo of where he wrote down something on a piece of paper and that was her ticket so obviously if she went in and bought the ticket inside um that's a different kind of ticket than the one that you get when you pay cash to the driver so that's that's just typical that's the way things work here um and but in everything everything's like that but anyway oh, that's not too bad at least these people are not um, doing what they do to you in uzbekistan
So here we go. First thing we discovered is we've got to take our shoes off. This is a luxurious bed. And it's waiting for the wife so I know where to go. Oh, this is our presidential suite here, is it? Yes, but uh, okay. I, don't, I don't know where we're supposed to Up in there, him. Oh, you can get a bag. Do you want a bag for us? Daddy. Alright, I'll grab two bags, though. You tell me a story while I'm getting two bags. What story do you want me to tell? Okay, so we are we are in the bus right now. It's a sleeping bus, and uh, presidential suite. Yeah, it's gonna take like uh, 12 hours to get to Omati, and um, that's obviously best of the best. Uh, it's a double bed, as you can see, and uh, we got our cat with us. No privacy. Uh, yeah, no, well. We're not gonna do anything, are you? We don't need any privacy. Oh, well, I sleep naked. That's just gonna, be, oh, it's gonna be a little bit embarrassing for them. Anyway, we'll get back to you. So, in the presidential suite here, we've got Travel Cat in his little box. We've got um, the wife on her side of the bed. Now, all the plans I had for tonight have all gone out the window when I discovered that everybody's looking at us. So, um, Sure it's going to be dangerous <laughs> seeing me sleep naked. I <laughs> know, only you. <laughs> so, yeah, we're right at the front, the presidential suite. So it's a little bit warm in here at the moment, but uh, I'm sure the air conditioner will come on at some point. And anyway, I'll sign off until the morning. Help us grow. Like, share and subscribe. I'm just wondering, can anyone tell me what these yellow tiles are for? They're in airports all around the world, now bus stations, and the only effect that they have is to stop you from being able to roll your bags across them. Anyone know what they are supposed to be for? So we made it to our Matty by bus overnight. We uh, arrived at 6 o'clock in the morning, which is obviously too early for us to be able to check into our apartment that we're hiring. And um, all, these, all these men here are all hawkers. They're all trying to convince us that we need them to be our cab driver. The only issue is we know that they charge three times what they should charge. So we just order our own through the Andex thing. So, how was our trip on the bus? Now, it's very comfortable and two of us had plenty of room, there was no cramping or anything. Um, the bus ride was not too rough, um, but for some reason neither of us and Travel Cat, none of us could get a wink of sleep. We don't know why, there was nothing particular would keep us awake just um, yeah just couldn't get to sleep so had no sleep um, been here for a couple of hours already but we think we can check in early now so we're just going to call ourselves a cab but we're here so you shut up Okay, so we've been to El Madi before. Uh, you've probably seen the video. If you haven't, I highly recommend that you do. So uh, there's not too many places in El Madi now that we've arrived by a bus that we haven't been to before. 
but this is one of them so we thought we'd share this little visit with you. Is feeling a little horse today? Welcome to El Matty Zoo. Darling, I know you um, are very interested in numbers and money and that sort of thing. So you'd be the perfect person to explain how much we just paid for the two of us to come to the zoo. Well, for the two of us, it cost 1,600 tin gear, which is about three dollars in uh, three Australian dollars. Three dollars each. Yeah. So six dollars we just spent. Yeah. Okay. Well, we better enjoy this. At that price. <laughs> well, it looks like some of the animals are just roaming free. You see, you, if you want to entertain children, it doesn't take too much councils around the world. Just have a little bit of a fountain. We had a bit of a gust of wind last night. Obviously, some houses were affected more than others. Well, the uh, first animals we've come, managed to find are a couple of sleeping... Pigs. Ah, oh, some cute little baby little goats. And right up there at the back of the pen is a solitary GNU. And this might be when I realise that I don't have an aliasing filter. This enclosure here is where they keep their Australian politicians. Other people call them vultures. And what kind of horse is that, darling? It's a Przewalski horse. And what is Przewalski? Where did I get that name from? From a name, surname of Przewalski, who was a Russian scientist. And uh, he discovered that horse uh, last century, in the beginning of last century, in oh. Kyrgyzstan. So he, a Russian man invented that horse. And that, up close, is an Ibex. Now we know that they come from here because we've seen them in the wild. In fact, Elena, when she went to Isika, um, oh, when she went to Alaacha, saw 14 of them. Couple of attention seekers, now we're over here. You're gonna be nice and quiet. Oh, beautiful little birds. What are they? Cranes, aren't they? Iced. Yeah, cranes. Oh. He can't fly, but I'm telling you, he can run the pants off a kangaroo. <laughs> Couple of tortoises, couple of meerkats. Simple. And the best enclosure in the whole zoo is reserved for the world famous bin chicken. And what would a zoo be without a bit of swanning around? There you go, I brought some food up to feed him. And he just helped himself. Well, these guys crossed the border into Uzbekistan with drones. This is the result. Uh, 
на сантиметр гелю через пес. Help us grow. Like, share and subscribe. So here we are, um, we're leaving Almaty for the second time, back at the same bus station again, we know our way around now, and uh, we're getting on a bus to, what's the name of the place? Oh, oh, the cat is getting out. Oh, the cat's, oh, now the cat's getting out of the bag. Putting up a fight. <laughs> He's put up a real fight. Okay. Um, what's the name of the place we're going to? Belhash. We're going to Belhash.